As we have already seen, legends say that from Svarog's shadow were created Bjelobog, White God, and Chernobog, Black God. Not much is really known of these two mysterious deities. Some say they only appeared after the introduction of Christianity. Others say they existed from the times when Slavs lived on the borders of Persia, echoing Ormuz and Achriman. Be that as it may, we know these two deities were mostly worshipped among the Western and Baltic Slavs. Among the Slavs, Bielobog is a god of pure goodness, of moral excellence. He is depicted dressed exclusively in long white robe. He would appear only during the day and do only good deeds. He would bring success and happiness to the people. For example, Bielobog would help the peasants finish their hard work. He would show the path to the lost travelers and so on. To a certain point he was an abstract god, completely different from other deities. Extremely mysterious as if he didn't belong within the Slavic pantheon at all. Scholars are of the opinion that Bielobog was to the Slavs what Baldr was to the Norse. It seems that their appearance among these peoples happened at almost the same time. Bielobog and Chernobog were worshipped by the Slavs equally, because in the nature old Slavs observed their permanent mutual influences which complemented each other. Chernobog or Chert is a master of earthly treasures, a master of the matter when it becomes devoid of the life force of Bielobog. Thus they were complementary forces of nature. Old Slavs dedicated holy places to these gods along the rivers. To Bielobog, high and well-lit places on the left banks of the rivers, and to Chernobog, dark places in hollows on the right banks of the rivers. Some sources say that to Chernobog, human sacrifices were offered, or, as Pomeranian Slavs apparently believed, Chernobog was after the complete destruction of man's body and soul. Sun God, all-seeing God of everything that follows divine order, is a God called Svetovit, Svantovit, Svantovit, depending on a Slavic language, of course. He is depicted as a deity with four faces that observe all four sides of the world. The most famous center of worship of this deity was in Arkona, on the island of Rügen, modern-day Germany. His symbols are a sword, a saddle, Eagles, a sacred flag carried in front of the army on military expeditions as ensuring victory, and a white horse of the most perfect kind, kept in his temple and taken care of by the priests. That horse was used for divination. In case of war, three rows of palings were erected by the priests in front of the temple, each consisting of two lances thrust into the ground. The third lance was laid across the top, after solemn prayer, a priest brought the horse to the palings. If it stepped across with the right foot, it was considered a favorable omen. But if the order was reversed, the enterprise must be abandoned. Svetovid was regarded as the god of gods because of his victories and prophecies. And the corner Slavs believed that to him other deities were but demigods. Thus, even Danish king Sweno, a Christian, offered a precious goblet to him. In one hand, Svetovit holds a sword or a bow, a symbol of war, and in another, a drinking horn into which priests would pour pure wine for the sake of divination. The ritual was held shortly after the harvest and went like this. On the day before the ceremonies, the priest, alone, carefully swept the temple. While inside the temple, he was careful not to even breathe, holding his breath as long as he could, lest the exhalation of a mortal man desecrated the presence of the deity. On the following day, with people waiting in front of the temple, the priest would examine if there was any lack of wine poured into the horn earlier. If so, it meant crop failure or failure in general. 
The priest would then pour out the liquor from the horn at the statue's feet and pour in fresh liquor, offering it to the deity, asking for prosperity for himself, his country and the people. He would finish the ritual after the prayers as he emptied the horn at one draught, then refilling it again and placing it back in God's right hand. All the foreign merchants that came to Rügen were obliged to dedicate a part of their merchandise to the treasury of the temple before being allowed to offer their wares for sale. Every year a Christian captive was chosen by lot to be sacrificed to Svetovit. Another ritual called Kolach, cake is known. The priest would place a cake in front of himself, seasoned with honey of a large size and ask the people, also gathered in front of him, if he, the priest that is, was visible to them. If they answered affirmative, the priest wished them that they would not be able to see him the following year. It was a wish for a larger and more successful harvest the next year. As mentioned, Svetovit is a great prophet. He knows the past, the present and the future. To the old Slavs, his prophecies were important in all aspects of life, in winning the wars, in migrations, in harvests, etc. One third of everything, especially armor and weapons captured from the enemy, was given to Svetovit. Svetovit had an elite unit, a retinue of 300 horse warriors. Whatever they won in war or by freebooting was given to the priest, who expended it in the purchase of all sorts of adornments for the temple. His symbol, of which a variation you can see in the upper left corner, they say is a connection between the waters of the earth and the fires of heaven. From such a connection new souls would emerge. His symbol protects pregnant women and encourages the birth of a healthy child. Also, it is a symbol of protection and strength for those going through spiritual hardship and hard toil. For the symbol, they say, offers perseverance for those who need it. Troglav or Triglav, the three-headed one, is a god of time, heaven, earth and the underworld which interconnects the aspects of Yava, Nava and Prava. Yava is the visible world of present time. Nava is an otherworldly, chthonic world of the past, a dark, dim world of that which is subconscious and that which is instinctive. Here, Troglav appears as a judge of the dead. Prava denotes the system of all the laws and rules set by Svarog. Prava also denotes the world of gods, bright future, the world of presage, of that which is intuitive and superconscious within humans. It is considered that Triglav is also a Chthonic god, very close to Veles. He was worshipped by the oak trees and during the springtime, which made him close to Perun. Some legends say that a black horse would be often sacrificed to Triglov. The priests of Triglov would say that their most important god had three heads because it ruled three kingdoms, namely heaven, earth and the underworld, and that his face is covered with a bandage so that he might ignore the sins of men as he did not see them and keep silent. One of the historical sources about Triglov is the biography of St. Otto of Bamberg, who Christianized the Baltic Slavs. At first, Otto was cast out by the Slavs, but eventually managed to Christianize them. It was written that in the temple of Triglov there were statues of gods, swords and knives dedicated to God, also silver-plated saddle and a well-built black horse. 
No mortal man was allowed to mount this steed. It was used for divination, similar to Svetovitz, thusly. In front of a temple, whenever a warlike expedition was about to be undertaken, the priest placed nine lances about a yard apart. The head priest then led the horse, adorned with a gold and silver saddle, thrice across these lances. If the horse stepped over without touching any of them, it was considered a favorable omen, and the expedition was decided upon. Interesting story comes from the town of Volin, where stood an idol of Triglov. After Christians destroyed the temple of Triglov, the priests of Triglov stole his idol and took it to a certain widow who lived on a farm. She took care of the idol in this manner. After making a hole in the trunk of a large tree, she placed the image of Triglov therein, wrapped in a blanket, and nobody was allowed to see it, much less touch it. Only a small hole was left open in the trunk through which to insert the sacrifice, and nobody entered that house unless it was to perform the rituals of the pagan sacrifices. Certain man, a German, came and tricked the old lady into showing him where the idol was. Not being able to destroy or damage the idol, the German simply stole the sacred old saddle which was hanging from a branch. The source then proceeds to describe how cunningly and with hatred Christians destroyed every last symbol of the old god. Much like the destruction of the parents' idol mentioned in our first video, Prince Pribislav in 1154, after becoming a Christian, ordered that this three-headed, unholy and ugly statue be broken in pieces. The times to betray the old gods have apparently arrived, ending the old world of Mother Europe. However, there was once an epidemic in the city, which the priests believe was sent by the gods as punishment for abandoning their faith, and that they should start offering sacrifices to the gods if they wanted to survive. Since then, all rituals and sacrifices began to be performed again, and Christian temples began to decline.